Hi, welcome to WebPixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon, and I'm joined today by our regular contributor to WebPixel Live, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. Good to see you. Good to see you too. You're looking very golden today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My t-shirt's picking up on the green screen. It's excellent. Dynamic effect. Um, mm -hmm. So, so over the past few episodes, we've discussed some um, some publishing projects that you've been involved with, Alex. So, I yeah. thought what would be great to chat about today was, you know, how to go about getting your images in a book. How do you how do you produce a book? What's what's mm -hmm. the process? Um, so, how do you do it, Alex? Tell us all. Um, well, first of all, I would say, you know, if you get those opportunities, and we'll talk about how you might manufacture them during this. Mm -hmm. It's a really worthwhile thing to do. Um, it has a lot of benefits to you as a photographer. You know, first of all, you're part of a pretty exclusive club. The number of underwater photographers down the years that have done books is, is far fewer than have won competitions. And therefore, it feels like, you know, you're, you're, in, you know, you're in sort of nice, exclusive company. Um, also, the book, you know, feels like a real achievement and goal from all this time you spent underwater yeah. and I know when I started out in this as a career you know people often thought oh gosh you know that means you're just sort of a, a dive bum sitting on a beach doing you know saying you're doing underwater photography as soon as you do a book and that book is you know in their local shop or, or whatever suddenly it's like you're an author you're you're creating you know really proper important pieces of work and it it definitely makes what could be seen as a slightly sort of um, are not very serious career into something that people go, wow, you're really doing something with it. So um, I think that's a, a real reward for it. I think the book as well becomes a story in itself and it's great for your own promotion and your own um, career opportunities as a photographer, because the book is very much a story. Um, you know, you can do, you do whenever you have a book coming out, you do a number of interviews talking about that. So all those aspects sort of, you know, help you as well. So mm. there are real advantages in doing it. Mm. I think in terms of doing a book, though, you do need to change your mindset as a photographer. Right. I don't think any, you know, good and interesting book on underwater photography would just be a collection of here are my best competition winning shots. Yeah, yeah. You know, it would just, it, it, that's, you know, that's, a, you know, a portfolio, potentially an exhib exhibition, but it's not going to hold a reader's attention. The pictures are not going to feel linked. So for me, a book needs a, a story. It needs a theme. It's not a, you know, um, you know, Adam, met Alex and here they went off, you know, an adventure, but there needs to be a, um, a theme that links the images together. The, you know, so that the book drives, you know, drives, there's lots of advice given to authors in this area, you know, photo books, people say, you know, maybe you need, three to six chapters to think about what those themes are in a photo book and and try and draw those together. The, the goal really, I guess, as a uh, underwater photographer is you want to find a theme that allows you to use the majority of your strongest pictures. I, I, think, but, I think the the, 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 the really sort of seminal underwater, underwater books have been very, very theme focused. More like time, um, mm. you know, those kinds of concepts, colors, you know, people have shot entire books that concentrate on a specific color or, or each yeah. chapter on a specific color you know th these these sort of thematic representations of a series of images are really really important and, and ultimately i think for a, for a book to be successful it's not about you might have the most stunning images in the world but there's nothing linking them into a into a thread it, it doesn't make a good book they're beautiful images but it doesn't make a good book and that mm -hmm. i think this is a really important point to draw out um and with that in mind as well i think the the other the other thing to tease out is is that you know going into your Lightroom library and selecting your however many um, mm. best images um, from from your Lightroom library will probably not work for the vast majority of people it won't work because again it doesn't have the thread so so in order to be successful uh, you've actually got to go out and create this book up probably over a period of years where you go out and and collect images specifically mm. for the book. Um, yeah, and, and I think that's obviously a huge part of the enjoyment as a photographer because it, it, it dictates where you choose to dive. It mm. dictates, you know, mm. how you choose to photograph. You know, you're thinking about these things, and I think that can be very satisfying, very rewarding, and give your photography a real focus. So right. that that is definitely part of the reward of doing a book as well, is that over time you're building this portfolio that you know is going to help communicate the book. So, yeah, it's not a case of just going into your Lightroom and going, oh, here are my, you know, 
150 five star pictures book done you know yeah. it's very much you need to, to be able to tell that story and so you know if, particularly if you're writing it as well you want to be right you know writing and you know at least planning chapters so that that you can can be doing that um in terms of sort of some of the more mechanical stuff mm. i would say most photography books have somewhere between 120 and 200 photos a big one would be two right. up at the upper end um and i think what a lot of photographers find is that they've maybe got you know 30 or 50 really stunning shots but mm. suddenly to get to those sort of numbers it really is you know it's a lot of pictures to find mm. and i think that that can surprise people is like you know oh yeah i've got yeah i've got loads of brilliant shots and they put them together and it's yeah you have you, they're all fantastic but once they get to sort of that 30 50 range it's amazing the quality begins to drop down or the pictures become very repetitive. Yeah. And I think that's a really important factor that people don't think about with books is that if you want to hold someone's attention through, you know, 150 images, you need visual variety. Yeah. You can't just go, oh, I'm brilliant at doing, you know, a shark on a dome port and yeah. right, here's 50 shots of sharks on a dome port. You can show two or three in a book. You can't show 50. And even if they're all brilliant. And I think yeah. that's something that surprised people. If you do all your wide, you know, if, you, if you're mainly kind of a, a fisheye wide angle, 105 macro sort of photographer, again, you can't do a book that's just, oh, fisheye wide angle, 105 port, fish portrait, fisheye wide angle. You know, you need variety. And I think it's one of the best things for your photography doing a book because it, it really forces you to shoot different lenses, different styles because you need to create that, that, you know, you end up using some of those mid range lenses, you end up using different techniques. Um, I think, I think a that's a fascinating part of the creativity of, 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 of being a book is that you know, all of us tend to play to our strengths, don't we? You know, we, you yeah. know we, we're good with a particular lens combination or a particular type of shot, whatever it is. And we imagine that that's enough to, to carry us through. And, and that wouldn't be enough for the book because you'd end up with, catchy very nice images but they all look the same and that's uh mm. you know i think this idea of actually deliberately going out and saying well i'm going to use this lens because i haven't used this lens because i want an image like this in the book that's a it's a very cool kind of goal-oriented um way of way of doing things yeah like it yeah yeah, yeah I, I remember when i was doing um reese revere which is a book i was published back mm. in 2007 six or seven and 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 won in the on team festival for the best photo book and i remember the the going to triton bay back in 2006 and that whole trip i was shooting with it was a crop sensor nikon lens called the 1755 okay. and i was using this lens because i knew i needed less fisheye shots in my book and i was like in this amazing place going i wish i could be shooting fisheye but because i was working on the book i was shooting different lenses to give myself some visual variety for the for the the, the portfolio of the book and right. trying you know a whole range of different techniques during that trip to boost the the variation i had plenty of pictures for the book but i wanted more more different types of pictures visually and again just to go back to a point that you made earlier which i think is, is something else that people probably don't consider is you know most people's portfolio of images is is maybe 30 images that's probably almost too many for a portfolio um, yeah you know, and and now you're looking at you know significantly greater numbers of images that are portfolio standard and that's without know, repetition which is you know without, I know, yeah, yeah really really visual repetition yeah yeah really and that's quite, i think where the challenge comes yeah yeah quite quite a but, big, it, but yeah. also where the satisfaction comes because it forces you as a photographer to go I, I think there's a few types of books that buck that trend i think obviously id books um but um sort of a, a marine life focused book where actually it's the different species you encounter. Yeah. Um, you can shoot them with predominantly similar techniques and it's the species are telling a different story each time. Yeah. Um, but it's certainly if you're sort of a photographer who's more interested in, in bigger animals, you know, there's only so many times you can show in a book and here's another big animal shot in exactly the same way and another big animal shot in exactly the same way. It becomes, you know, there's been some, you know, a lot of books done on cetaceans down the years, which are, are full of a hundred amazing photos and you're bored after 30 pages because it's just, yeah. it's all blue. Yeah. Um, and it's just, you know, animals in blue, animals in blue, animals in blue, animals, you know, you need, you need to really think about, about how that thing will play out. And I think it's why some of the books that maybe are about color or maybe about, are actually very strong and have done very well as books, um, even though maybe the individual photography is not that good because the end product is so strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a package you're selling, isn't it? Not a, not yeah. a, not an image, yeah. 
Right. The other piece of advice that I really want to squeeze into this because it just popped into my head is that if you are doing a book, don't tell the world until you've done it. Um, <laughs> I, every, every single dive has been, you know, in a resort or somewhere and on Liverboard, and you know, there's been someone like, oh yes, I'm doing a book and it's going to be fantastic, and and it never appears, you know. And I think it's, you know, do you know? Yes, it's good to be working towards these things. And yeah, you can t talk to your friends about it, but you know, don't go around the place telling the world about it. It's much more fun to turn up somewhere going, and here's the book I've done, as opposed to going around going, telling everyone you're doing a book. So, um, and I, I guess that brings us on to how to get it published, which is, I guess, the question that everyone, you know, that everyone feels they've got this book in their photography. How do you get it published? Yep. And it's, um, you know, it's not a straightforward question. Um, I have done all my books working with publishers, right. but I have to say that I wish I had done several of them self-published. Right. And I know that always surprises people when I say that. Yeah. But the goal of a publisher is to find good authors, good material and make money from it. Yep. And the way, no, you know, underwater photography books, even the most successful ones, you know, don't sell gazillions of copies. You know, they sell thousands of copies and that's successful. The only way to make good money from selling relatively few units is to make sure that there's a good profit margin in it, which either means making the book ridiculously expensive, which everyone wants to avoid, yep. or by making the production of the book cheap. Right. Um, yep. You know, having sponsors on board to help pay for that. Or that we'll come into that a little bit when we talk about self-publishing. And... If you, the way you make a book cheap to publish is using cheap paper, using cheap printing processes, not doing, you know, color checking and not doing adjustments to the color. And all those things will make your pictures look less good. Yep. So the downside of signing up with a publisher is yes, they want their book to look good, but they want it to look good for a price. So if there's a choice between, you know, this is the best quality, this is nearly as good, they're always gonna, but cheaper, they're always gonna, you know, go down that route. And, and I guess they might even limit the number of pages, for example. I mean, that's yeah, that yeah, of course, le yeah, so. less is cheaper, you know. Yeah, yeah but the, I would say that most publishers, they want to produce, a, you know, a, an item that's going to sell well. Yeah. So they'll, they'll often want to get as much content on the page as possible. And typically, you know, I think many of my favorite photography books are self-published where the the, the photographer has been involved in the design process of the book and they've given their pictures the space to breathe and space to be enjoyed. Whereas typically when you're working with a publisher, they're like, well, if we can get some extra text on that page and some more pictures, the person who browses through this in a bookshop is going to go, wow, I get so much for this book. I'm going to buy it. Um, I, I mean, that's, uh, you, know, you know, publishers know the world as well. And they know that books that are beautiful will sell as well. So it's not a black and white issue. But ultimately, yeah. their, their job is to make profit for their company. Otherwise, they're no longer a publisher. Um, whereas I think you as a photographer, you want your book pictures to look fantastic in a book. Yeah. So self-publishing gives you that control over that, um, which I yeah. think is, is really important. In the past, I think there was some stigma attached to self-publishing. It was almost seen as, you know, you're not good enough to work with a publisher. Yeah. But I I think in recent years, people have realized that actually self-publishing allows them to produce a book that's exactly to their vision. And often the market appreciates that more um, because I think the photographers realize that, you know, OK, the book's only going to sell, you know, hundreds or maybe, you know, thousands, a few thousand copies. And they know those customers. So they know what they want. And they're not interested in trying to pick up another two or three thousand of general public sales so they can produce a product that's actually much more tailored to what people want. And self-publishing when in those sorts of numbers is not prohibitively expensive. You know, yes, it costs money, but if you're pretty confident that you can sell, you know, 500 or a thousand copies because you've got that sort of number of people who really are interested in your photography, then, you know, you know, if say it's going to cost, say, 20,000 whatever units to 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 pay for that publishing you know if you can sell a thousand copies for 20 pounds you can make that money back yep. you know yep. or you can make it 30 pounds and and make it and 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 and, and do do you know do even better so you mentioned sponsorship alex what what how would that work with self-publishing then how would you how would you work with sponsors or how does that work 
Well, I think what a lot of photographers have done, you know, both in underwater photography and, and in other areas of, of photography, is they'll find a, a, a sort of a corporate sponsor, a company with, you know, shared interests that maybe wants to be the sponsor of a book and will put some money up front in return for a, a set, a, a, you know, a, a proportion of the printed copies. Mm-hmm. And so say, you know, say for, for the sake of argument, pre- producing the book is going to cost with the design and the printing 20,000 of, of whatever unit of, of money. Um, and if you can get a, a publisher, a, a sponsor comes in and says, I'll give you 10,000 of that money and you give me a quarter of the thousand books you're producing. They get 250 books, which have got their logo in the front and their stuff to give to their key clients, their key distributors or whatever. And that's a model that I think a lot of photographers you know, have followed successfully is you yeah. find that sponsor out there and that allows you then to produce exactly the book you want. And I think I wish I'd perhaps followed that route more rather than work with publishers. I, I've really enjoyed working with publishers and I've learned a huge amount from it. And I perhaps wouldn't change anything I've done. And I, you know, there are many advantages of, of working with publishers, which probably I've, I've undersold in this, this chat. But um, I think, you know, the advantage of doing stuff yourself would mean you can make sure the printing is, is, is perfect out of the printers. Yeah. You can go to the, you know, the print run and you can say to the printer, that's printing too heavy on the page, you know, a bit less ink, that's printing too light on the page, a bit, you know, needs a bit more color, a bit more ink. And I think generally when you work in a publisher, you're, those tends, things tend to be out of your control. Um, Something I thought, I, I, I thought I'd, I'd ask you about because um, it, it's your recent Thistlegorm collaboration um, yeah. for the Thistlegorm book. I mean, that, that's obviously you uh, uh, providing images with a, a range of authors and providing input and that's another approach i guess isn't it um, and that was published through a publisher but but certainly you know there if you've got a a, a strong enough theme um it, you know book doesn't necessarily have to be a solo affair you could you could collaborate as well that's another option i guess a- absolutely and i think it's not done enough because actually um you know you don't want a hundred contributors yeah. but Working, you know, I've done several books working with authors because yeah. although I enjoy writing, I'm not, you know, as talented as as people who are, you know, really specialist in that area. Yeah. Um, I've also enjoyed the fact that it's, it's, you know, as a photographer, you work a lot on your own. And the mm-hmm. chance to work with another person on a project is very rewarding. You know, you get their input, you, you know, you interact mm-hmm. with them. You don't get everything your own way, but they'll bring ideas that you would never have had. And I think, yeah, that collaboration is, is really enjoyable. And it's perhaps one of the few times as photographers we really are able to collaborate. Yeah. I've also done multi-photographer books. And those can be really interesting, particularly when you work with very talented photographers who have, you know, who shoot things that you would never shoot. And you know, one of the most enjoyable was the 2020 Vision Project in the UK, which yeah. brought together 20 of the UK's leading wildlife photographers. And you know, they were you know, predominantly all topside photographers. So what they brought to the project was, you know, sat, you know, wonderfully alongside my my work. But they all have slightly different styles, slightly different specializations. And within that project had different projects. So yeah. seeing that all come together was was really rewarding. Um, and, you know, so that can be another really good aspect of it. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess the final thing, sorry, I, I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Uh, do you have a question first? Sorry, Adam. No, 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 go, go ahead. Yeah. The final thing I wanted to talk about was the financial side of it. Hmm. And I think one thing I would say to anyone going into publishing a book underwater is to be aware that even the most successful underwater photography books are not going to turn you into J.K. Rowling and, you know, having <laughs> gazillions of, 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 of income. Um, however, you know, a good book should turn a profit and provide some quite useful income if this is, you know, what, what you want to do. If you find a book that people do want to buy, um, I do think, you know, you should be looking to always make a profit out of these things, even if it's not a big profit. Um, the way, but what I would say, though, is think about what else you can gain from doing a book. I sort of touched on it a little bit at the beginning that it's great for your standing as a photographer. It's great for your profile. The book itself becomes a story. And that can get you a lot of press, a lot of publicity, all of which are good things for you as a photographer. Um, A book that I'm, I don't want to say I'm working on a book, but a book that I might be working on. Um, (laughs) Actually, one, you know, one of the major magazines in the UK, um, you know, not not, not a diver magazine, already wrote to me saying, you know, when this is out, we want to run a special extended feature on it. And I, you know, I'm like, I haven't even done the book. (laughs) So, you know, it's, you know, the books become a story in themselves, the fact that you've done it 
you know, is really interesting to people and, and, and can pull people in. In terms of making money, though, I think it's best to approach underwater photography books as thinking about what they can do for you and what your career and the satisfaction of doing them rather than thinking this is going to allow me to put my feet up and retire. Um, and that can also dictate the type of book you want. And it's why for me self-publishing is so attractive because actually if you want the book to be a portfolio for your underwater art, you want control of how the whole book looks. You want it to be beautifully printed. You know, if you turn up, you know, say at a dive resort and you want to give the dive resort one of your books, if it's maybe been printed very cheaply and, and everything like that, the book doesn't look as beautiful as if, you know, no expense was spared on it. And you can tell them, go, look at my pictures, don't they look amazing? And everyone who turns up at that resort and opens the book goes, wow, look how beautiful yeah. these are printed and, and everything. And I think that, you know, if those are things that you want from a book, self-publishing can be very, you know, can allow you to produce something that's a wonderful showcase for your work. If you want that book to reach as many people as possible, then getting it published to a publisher is much more important because they will promote it. They will reach, you know, markets around the world and that your book will reach loads of people. So, you know, they both have their merits in that respect. Returning briefly to the publisher model, Alex. So, mm -hmm. so you, you write the book, presumably how, how does that work financially? Do they pay you a lump sum when you supply them with the manuscript or um, do you then get royalties per copy? Or I, I mean, I guess it varies. I, I don't know. How yeah. does that work? Typically both is that, right. You usually get a an advance on a book, and in my experience, that advance comes um, at the point of signing the contract to agree to do it, yeah. and then with perhaps a you know part of it, often half, being paid at the delivery of the material. The yeah. publishers, you know, want this hook to make sure you finish it because they've had yeah, yeah. plenty of bad experience with with that. So you get a lump sum to start, and then a lump sum to finish it. That. It's called an advance because it's an advance against your royalties. So when the book starts selling, you then don't get money until that advance has been paid off. Gotcha. A lot of specialist publishers nowadays don't typically offer advances. And certainly, you know, I found with some of the books I've done recently that you're sort of going, well, I'm only going to do it for this. And they're like, well, we don't normally do that, but we'll make an exception this time and, and do it that way. So I would say that that has gone a little bit out of it. And they're basically saying, We'll publish the book for you, and when we've got the money back in from selling it, we'll start giving you some money. Um, and there's plenty of authors who will agree to that model. I, I'm, I'm not one of them, but you know there are. You know that's that's the way that a lot of underwater books are done these days. In terms of making that money in, you then get your percentage, which is a relatively small percentage, of the 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 price of the book. People think, oh wow, I've just bought this book for you know twenty whatever, you know the author must be raking in 10 of that. You know, the publisher is selling it to Amazon for nine. So yeah. Amazon is making 11, yeah. you know, and then yeah, the yeah. publisher is maybe offering you, you know, less, you know, is then got to take away all the production costs. So you're getting maybe one or two of that 20, maybe one, maybe less. And then if they sell the rights in other countries, that can actually also further reduce your income from it. So it sounds like this amazing way of making money and, Lots of people are benefiting from it financially, particularly um, Jeff Bezos, but yeah. not, not so many other people are, you know, not, not so much. Other. So the way I have certainly with Underwater Photography Masterclass, which I knew would sell really, really well, is I bought for the same. Well, actually, I had to pay slightly more than Amazon paid my publisher, but I bought copies of my book from Amazon and then sold them direct myself for the yeah. same price as is on the cover of the book and made the the amazon money myself and and that was a, a good way of doing it which again kind of yeah. comes back around to the side of self-publishing isn't it because by yeah. self-publishing you you effectively control distribution as well so or, um, you can sell to amazon for whatever the rise through amount amazon's prepared to pay you for it but um but equally you know you you can have a box of books that you you distribute yourself um, or yeah. through your friends or through dive resorts or whatever. However. So I, I guess this is another advantage of, of, of self-publishing that, that you would control, control, you know, the, the, how they're sold as well. So Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, typically, you know, underwater books are not selling gazillions of copies. So it, it is a, a manageable number, mm. um, you know, with underwater photography masterclass, I've signed 1500 um, now almost 14 it's it's 14 I think 94 was the last one I signed I've numbered them all inside the inside cover um, but the first I think 800 of those 
I did by mail order from home. And yeah. obviously the book sold thousands and thousands of copies through Amazon and through bookshops yeah, yeah. around the world. But, you know, I at least made, you know, I made more money selling copies of my own book that I bought from the publisher than I got yeah. paid for the publisher selling it. For, you know, yes. you know, so, yeah, so financially that was worthwhile for me. But, you know, a lot of people who do books are not maybe financially motivated. And I would have done more self-publishing had I had the finances to do it. But being an underwater photographer, I don't have that sort of capital around. But a lot of people who do underwater photography for a hobby might do. And I would, yeah, I wouldn't feel any stigma at all with self-publishing. Many of my favorite photography books are definitely self-published. Fascinating. Thank you, Alex. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, we, we, we can't really leave this without mentioning it. So, so number of books, Alex, go on, choose a few. Where can we get them? Um, well, some are out of print now. I think Reefs Revealed is out of print. And I, I know it's like ridiculously expensive everywhere now, not because it's a must have book, just, just because it's, it's hard to get hold of. There's a demand for it. Yeah. And people just, the few copies that are online, you know, new, I think have got like, I remember someone saying it was like over a thousand dollars somewhere they saw it, but it's not because the book is worth a thousand dollars. I'm very keen to to stress that it's just because it's out of stock and there aren't any, and people have just put them up at silly money for for that reason. Um, you can find it secondhand for for very much less. Um, but yeah, so the first book I did was The Art of Diving, and that was a book about scuba diving, which I did with the writer Nick Hanna. Yep. Um, then I wanted to do a book on coral reefs, and I did that with Reefs Revealed, which is a book on reefs and climate change and 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 the characters of coral reefs and dealing with coral reefs globally at that time everyone was kind of so focused on asian reefs indo-pacific reefs and caribbean reefs were very much left behind um and then more recently though and then then i didn't do many books for a while i was trying to build other areas of my career aware that books weren't financially that 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 you know always the best thing for me to doing then we did the 2020 vision project about mm -hmm. 10 years ago and then since then, I did Underwater Photography Masterclass and Secrets of the Sea, which I did with Professor Callum Roberts, which is a book on trying to present the themes, the important themes of marine conservation, but wrapped up secretly in a message that people who wouldn't buy a book on marine conservation would buy. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of to make a beautiful book about the oceans, which when you open it on any page, it looked beautiful. But when you actually bought it and took it home, it taught you about marine conservation without yeah. showing you pictures that would turn off members of the public who wouldn't buy those books. You know, okay. we talked about conservation photography before, but it's, you know, it, you've got to find images that are going to reach the audience you want to reach. Um, and, the message, and yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then the, the book that, have, that came out this year was the Thistlegorn book, which is a book specifically about wrecks. So I like the fact that I've done books on coral reefs i've done books on the seas in general on marine conservation on scuba diving on teaching underwater photography and doing doing books on shipwrecks i feel it's you know part of i've always sort of prided myself that i don't want to be seen as a specialist in any one area of underwater photography and i think that that track record of books shows that they're not you know all marine life books or all you know photography books they, they're all different so I, i've enjoyed that so if you if you interested in um, checking out more of Alex's books, probably a good place to would be to search Alex Mustard on Amazon, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, some are in print, some are not in print. Um, they're listed on my website as well, which is, I, yep. I try to put some Amazon links on there, but it's difficult because there's obviously Amazon in every country and um, and things like that. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, they're, they're worth checking out. I mean, you know, also you can find quite a few of them secondhand as well now, so that's also a good way to give them more life. Fantastic. Thank you, Alex. Um, and I'd like to thank our sponsor today, which is Backscatter uh, Photo and Video. Um, please feel free to add any suggestions um, or possibly list any books that you've really enjoyed um, in the comment section. Um, and um, uh, and feel free to drop us a like if you've enjoyed something. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you.